Hi, my name is David and I'm going to show you how to use the elliptical add-on for Google Sheets. So this add-on is made for fetching data from multiple sources on the internet to gather uh, prices like crypto prices and in particular to gather information about Axie Infinity uh, and this info is going to come from some Sky Mavis servers, GraphQL servers, regular API servers and also fetching data from the running blockchain. So I'm going to show you how to install the add-on and how to use some of these uh, custom functions that comes with it. And I'm gonna show all the functions, I'm just gonna so show a couple of them so you can get started and then continue exploring on your own. So the first step is to actually install the add-on and for that you will have to go to the extension menu. By the way, you can open this, you can install this add-on in any spreadsheet that you have. I just happened to create this one called elliptical add-on demo but it applies to any spreadsheet that you have before. You just go to extension, go to add-ons and then get add-ons. And from here, you're gonna type the name of the add-on, it's called elliptical, type enter, and this is the add-on that you would like to install. This is my, my name actually. So you click there and you're gonna click uh, the install button. And you're gonna uh, click continue because it's gonna ask you for some permissions. And the permissions for this is actually two of them. One is the permission to actually modify the spreadsheet where this add-on has been installed, which is obvious given that the add-on is a bundle of custom functions that are gonna work on particular cells on your spreadsheet. So it's gonna fetch data from the internet and bring it back. So it needs permission to modify the value in those cells. And also ask for permission to connect to external services, just because all, all this data, as I mentioned, it comes from different sources, uh, different servers uh, on the internet. So it's asking for permission to go and fetch that data for you as part of the custom function. So you, you can go and read more information. These links just point to my blog uh, and you click uh, allow. Once you do that, now the add-on is installed in this particular spreadsheet. By the way, the add-on won't have permission to modify any other spreadsheet that you have. It's only for this particular spreadsheet where you're installing the add-on. And the add-on, as, as if you saw before, it didn't even ask any permission to read data from your profile. So the add-on won't be able to collect data like your email or name, none of that. Um, so it's just for security measures to try to prevent your, pre preserve your privacy. So as an example, I have here um, a couple of running wallet addresses just to show you how to how you could use the add-on, right? Uh, so once it's installed, if you go back to extensions, you're gonna see this new menu here, elliptical, right? Uh, this help sub menu is actually just created by default. Just have some some links of the add-on. You will actually have to refresh the page like the first time you install it. You just need to do that just because there's another sub menu that should be should appear, but it doesn't show up right after you install it. Uh, so if you open again, you're gonna see the start here menu. That's the one that I defined, and here you're gonna see the, a list of all the functions that you're gonna be able to interact with. And I, I put it here just because it, either, even though all the, let me show you again, all the functions are prefixed with the three letters ELP uh, so as a way to namespace it. This will also help for autocomplete that Google, Google has, or Google Spreadsheet has defined there as well. For example, if I do equals ELP, you can see that there's an autocomplete of a lot of functions, but this autocomplete is showing up up to 10 results, there are more than 10 functions. So that's why it could be deceiving. You might think that these are all the functions available on the item. They are not, there are more. Uh, so that's why I put it in the in the extension menu. In the start here, you're gonna see the full list. Another place that you can go to see more information about the item is actually going to my blog. It's just uh, david or dash barreto.com. And from there, you can go to the item menu and that's a lot of information about the add-on, how it works, where the data is being fetched from. Uh, so you can read this on your time, but it also has a list of all the functions kind of classified by aggregator functions and then you have utility functions. And then you can go, if you see more, more details about the add-on, uh, you can go to the privacy policy and actually shows you this little system diagram of where this information is coming from and how the add-on interact with all these third-party services that, that have the information. So you can go and read this from, from my blog. So going back to the add-on itself, um, so let's use the first function. I'm just gonna show you a couple. Uh, 
let's say for example, what if I want to know the name that is associated with this particular wallet address? So this is about uh, Axe Infinity in particular, right? So you're going to go always start with ELP for elliptical prefix. Then you can go with run because it's information about the running network. And then we can fetch the name, right? So this is the custom function that expect us as an argument the wallet address. You can display here more information. Let's try to display, okay, what is the type of that argument? Uh, some information try to describe what the function does and also describing what are the arguments that you need to pass. So let's pass this wallet address. And it's gonna fetch the data from different servers. And then you have it, that is the name of the account. So let's call it here the account name. Account name. And we can, why well, it's not, come on, uppercase, all right. And we can just apply the same function for all the wallet addresses. And we're gonna get eventually, there you go. That's the account associated with this wallet address. We can go and for example, explore, okay, what is the MMR? In, in Axe Infinity, the MMR is like the ranking that you have in the game. So let's call this the MMR. And there's a function for that. Uh, there you go, ELP run MMR. Again, it only expects the wallet address. So I pass this one here. And I don't know why it's trying to, all right. And apply it to all of them. And there you go, now you have the MMR of all these players. This is very useful when you have, for example, a guild and you want to have, um, like, in, in, in a central place to see how your scholars are doing. This is a great way to do it. Uh, very commonly, you would like to see the amount of SLP, which is the in-game token that the, the player earns, well, the, the play to earn part of the game. So the SLP, it, it leads into different places. So you have the unclaimed SLP that it is not yet on the blockchain, it's just in a regular database that Sky Mavis have. And then you have the claim SLP, which is the SLP that is actually now lives in the running blockchain. So that's why we have two different functions for that. So let's call this the unclaimed SLP. And then we have here the claim SLP, right? Let's right align this. Okay. Uh, so the function is again, it's start with ELP. And we can just see here, um, if it doesn't show, show here just because we have the limit of the 10 functions, but it, if you put just, I think claim, there you go, claim SLP. No, in this case, we want the unclaim in this column, right? We pass the wallet address, there you go. I came uh, bold, I want it, and apply it to all the addresses. There you go, that is the amount of SLP that they all have. I like to format this as, as a number. So let's put it here. Let's remove the decimal numbers because they're not very relevant uh, on SLP. And now we can see, okay, give me the, the claimed SLP, the one that lives on the blockchain. So again, ELP run and claimed SLP. You pass a wallet address. You can apply it to all of them. Let's see how much they have. And as you can see, uh, a couple of them, they actually have SLP in the running network. Uh, let's apply the, the format. Actually, we can apply the same format here with this tool. So this is one of the nice things to have this information as part of the, as custom functions for for a spreadsheet because you, now you can format data the way that you like it. You can define columns in the order you like because one of the issues that I have with the web apps that exist out there for Axe Infinity is that you have to, you know, they, they, they give you one way to display information and then there's little you can do to customize it. Here you have full control how do you want to display that data? Uh, so now you have this, the, the, the on claim SLP and the claim SLP. And then you go and fetch all the data, for example, how much of wrap either do they have? How much of AXS do they have? And there are functions for that. So let's put here the, the wrap ETH and the AXS on these columns. And let's explore the functions. ELP, run, and width. Returns the amount of width that held by the running wallet address. As usual, we pass the wallet address. And if you wait, there you go. It's a very small number, that's why so many decimals. So let's try to, let's wait for this load. Let's say that, I don't, you know, I, I don't want that many decimals. Let me just, oops, do it the other way. Less decimals, I just want to see like, maybe three like this, right? That's that's good enough for me. Uh, same with AXS, ELP run AXS. Pass the wallet address. 
and there you go all the axs well none of them have axs which is normal given that if you have any access in your account you're usually you're staking it or you have it in a liquidity provider on katana um so these are the three tokens that you can have in the game what else you can actually you can fetch uh the number of axes that the account has and also you can fetch what is the a reference value of those axes so let me show you how it works so let's first of all let's get how many axes they have uh let's call it axe count right and so we go to elp raw and then axis count all right these functions give you back the the number of axes that this account has and it has 10 axes actually quite a quite a lot well not a lot maybe they have just extra energy and like the, this one this is more like a, zip, a regular account with just the three x that you need to play and curiously this one doesn't have any axes uh good okay and now you can fetch i think this is one of the most interesting custom functions is that it gives you kind of a floor price for the axes that the account has so it's gonna it's gonna take a look at the the body parts of, of the access that the account has and then go into the marketplace API and fetch, give me the floor price of this axis. So it's like the, the, the worst case scenario. If, if you were to sell the axe in that account, how much if you can get back, right? Um, so let's call this the axis value. Let's put it in plural, plural. axis value. Right line, let's put this one in plural as well for consistency. And now let's use the function run axis value all right passing the wallet address all good and as you can see because it has 10 axes the value is quite well, quite high relatively in in ether term terms so let's decrease the number of decimals to three as the case of ether this is in sorry this is a, um in ETH, as i mentioned before and there, there are many more custom functions and I'm going to show all of them. I'm just going to show you some of the, the ones that I think are the most commonly used. Uh, things that you can do on top of that, you can say, for example, let's, I'm going to call these, let's say these are my scholars, right? Let's assume that they're, they're not. They're just random people that I picked from the marketplace. Uh, I want to see, for example, if uh, how much is actually this worthwhile, right? How much is this SLP worth, the web, the AXS? So I can do, um, I can actually have a different tab here. Let's call it, let's call it the crypto price or, or um, let's call it uh, rates, right? And we're interested in knowing the price for ETH, for SLP and for AXS, right? So let's see here the price. And we're gonna have again a custom function that allows you to fetch that data. So we call it ELP. And this one is called Coin Price. Fetch the price in USD of the provided crypto or fiat currency. Uh, you can pass an optional date, but if you don't pass the date, it just gives you the the, the price of today. Uh, and it's not only limited to cryptocurrencies. You can actually pass uh, the three-letter symbol of a fiat currency. I mean, all you, it will give you the exchange rate for that one. So actually, I can show you that in a moment. Let's first, for, for now, let's get the price of these uh, tokens. So the price of ETH, there you go. Uh, let's format this as a dollar value. And we can do the same here. I'm going to do here the same because I just put here the Canadian dollar in case because I live in Canada. So just to show you that you can also use fiat currencies to do some conversions if you want to. And now with these reference prices of today, we can now define, well, if this is all my scholars, so how much money do I have invested? Like if, if I were to sell everything today, how much money would I get? So you can, let's call this, um, let's call this assets. And let's say, so you're gonna say, okay, so this is the column for the assets. They say, I want to know how much ETH, how much SLP, which is the, the main one, how much uh, wrap ETH, how much AXS do I have? And let's call it this the USD value. No, let's call this the total, right? So let's left, right align this one. 
So the total of SLP, we can say, well, let's say that is the, the let's have here before I do that, let's, we can do like the sum at the bottom, right? And here as well, this makes it a little easier to do these calculations like that. Uh, yeah, I know it's, it's almost zero, zero actually. You can see how many, how many axes in total you will have and how many in the axis value, right? Okay, so now we can say, well, if I were to give me the total for the unclaim and the claim SLP, and in the case of a scholarship, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't say that you you have control and you have you had to pay your scholar an amount, right? So maybe you can say before you do the, the total here, we can do it with the with the AXS. I think it's the easiest one just because it's directly give me uh, this zero, right? In the case of the wrap ETH, we can take the wrap ETH and each of the account, the total, and then also add the the floor, floor value of, of the axis, right? And for the SLP, if you're working, in, uh, if you have a scholarship, you see what you have, you're gonna have some uh, percentage that you, you give to the scholars and, and you keep to yourself. So let's call here the SLP cut. And let's say, for example, that I, I give the scholars 50%, right, of, of whatever they make. So 0 0.5, oops, not 50. And for all of them, let's remove here. And then I can say, like, manager SLP, because that's the one that I'm interested in. So I can simply say, okay, just take this one and multiply by the percentage. And there you go. And this is not a percentage. This is a number so format as a, actually I can just take this one here, copy the format and there you have it. And then we can just have the song. Ah, again, format, let's copy this over. All right. So now this is the amount of SLP that I'm, me as a manager, I can actually dispose of, I can take control. The claim SLP is always in my control. That's that's the one that lives on the on the running blockchain. At least that's the way that I that I see it. So now I can I can see okay the total SLP that I have as a manager is actually the sum of this plus whatever is in the the blockchain. And now I want to see okay how much this is worth in in US dollars, right? So because we have the the exchange rate or, or the today's price all these cryptocurrencies, we can say, okay, multiply this by the rate or the value of SLP today. And the same, similar for the wrap ETH that we have over here. Wrap ETH and ETH has the same reference price. And then, well, AXS doesn't have anything, but just for the sake of completeness, let's just put it here. And if you want to see it in, in your local currency, in my case, in Canadian dollar, uh, because you have the reference there as well, I can just take this value and divide by the exchange rate. And now I can define this to be like a constant value. And there you go. Let's put this as a, as a Canadian dollar format. There you go. You can do things more interesting. You can actually create a chart for these values so you can see the distribution. So here you can do, um, how do I do this? I select all this, maybe insert chart. Let's, let's take, uh, not this chart, let's take, uh, where is it? Mm, the pie chart, yeah. In the pie chart, I want to see the labels, the asset, and here I want to see the amount of USD. So these two are labels. And yeah, that kind of makes sense. I can give it a name. Uh, for example, assets dis uh, distribution. And that's it, that's good enough. So I can put, just put it to the right. And just at, at a glance, I can see that I have most of my my wealth is, is in, in wrap ETH, either as wrap ETH itself or as axes that I could sell and I could take 
uh, some some value back, and then the amount of SLP is a small one. So this is just uh, an overview of so a couple of functions. There are many more, so you can keep exploring. There are functions for fetching data from the from the marketplace directly. There are functions for calculating the breeding cost, and you can extract much more information from each of the running wallet address. Uh, and I'll do more videos in the future showing you how to use all this information. For now, this is just a, like a tour of the atom. Hopefully you will enjoy it. Let me know what you think. And that's all for today. My name is David and I'll see you next time.